don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. No, you've left Teddy. Go get Teddy. Where is he? He's in there. Go find Ted. I'm all windswept and not very interesting. We've just got back from a rather wintry WALK. Um, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, um, 20, 29th. Yes, 29th of October, eh? Um, what are you doing down there? Strange dog. Go find Teddy. Go find Mr. Teddy. Are you going to come and say hello? Hup, 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 hup. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Quick, that was only a little one, though. That was only a little one, wasn't it? No, you can't get on my knee. No, you can't get on my knee. Go on. Off you go. Go bring Mr. Teddy. Dogs, eh? <laughs> so what was I saying? Yeah, we just got back from a rather wintry walk. Um, kind of cold, blustery, lots of leaves blowing all over the place. Started raining a tad. Um, it's just coming, Mr. Ted, now. There you go. Are you happy now? Eh? <laughs> like I said, strange dog. Anyway already a minute and a half into the video and I've not actually said anything. So it's Friday afternoon. Ian's gone to a steampunk event over in Whitby in the North York, up in North Yorkshire for the weekend, um, which means it's just me and Mr. Mr. Bentley this weekend. Um, so what I thought I would do is I'd finally have a go at creating a mixed media canvas using a paintbrush. Now, a while ago, excuse me, disappearing off the screen, um, I went down to my local hardware store and I bought a huge six inch paintbrush. It's massive, it looks almost as big as my head. Um, and I discovered that it, it was too big. It is too big to do what I want to do. So I bought a four inch one instead, which is a lot better. Um, now the idea was, I've seen quite a few videos from um, Finnevair um, and company um so her design team so Finnebear otherwise known as Anna Dabrowski or Dabrowska not really sure how we pronounce her surname but Finnebear to her friends anyway and she's one of the designers for premium marketing um and she does lovely mixed media work um and has done um mixed media projects using paintbrushes like this um as the base to build her mixed media three-dimensional work on. So I thought I'd have a go at doing that, which is why I bought the brushes, because I've always wanted to have a go. So now that I've stopped all the waffle, um, and I've kind of told you what I'm going to do, I'll let me turn over to my overhead camera and I'll show you um, the beginnings of the composition of what I've got, and, and then I'll talk you through it. Okay, so this is pretty much the composition so this is the four inch paintbrush that's the six inch as you can see huge difference um and this is a box canvas from my friends at indigo blue it's just an a4 box canvas so the brush as you can see fits top to bottom right the way across so normally uh, the ones that i've seen anna and friends do um have just been the brushes but I thought I would attach mine to a canvas so I've got that background to play with as well and that's kind of going to be the composition there's going to be a few other bits and pieces I've still um, got some um, cast pieces that I want to use that are just drying downstairs at the moment or just finishing kind of curing at the moment um, so that's pretty much the way that I want to go I've already photographed it I've already taken one complete photo here um, but I've also done it in three sections going right the way down the canvas so we're okay to do that now so I can push everything to one side um, that I'm going to use because I pretty much know where everything's going to go so that's that's the four inch brush 101.6 so and the canvas is just a it's a shallow 
canvas. It's not a deep edged one or anything like that. Um, so we're okay to just take that off and then it's a rather nice wrap that somebody's designed. <coughs> He says, um, right, so that can go in the bin now. So, yeah, so there's the canvas. Now, when I'm doing this type of canvas normally, um, I would use my hot glue gun because using um, gel medium takes too long to dry. But because I've got plenty of time, it's Friday afternoon and not Saturday afternoon, then I've got at least 24 hours to finish this canvas, which is a bit of a luxury, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick it down using the Indigo Blue, um, if I can find it that is, I'll put it away. Well this is what happens when you tidy up. Where is it now? It's right there in front of me, I haven't tidied it up at all. Um, there we go, I'm going to use the Indigo Blue Super Thick Slap It On, which is the heavy bodied gel medium. So let's see if you can get the lid off. Oh, there we go. It's, you know, it's that heavy that it's just not going to fall out of the pot look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rather generous portion and I'm going to butter the back of the brush like that, including the bristles all down the back there. And I'm going to try and just pull it through the bristles there. And then I'm going to put some along here as well. That's where it's going to touch the canvas. Okay, so I can now flip it over and then drop that down onto my canvas. And that's going to sit into that gel medium and dry. But what I also want to do is I want to try and just add some of it along the bottom here so it looks like the paintbrush has had years of use and has just been neglected. So where you see the texture, when this dries, that texture will stay exactly where it is on the paintbrush, but it will also help to give you that bit of stability when you're creating the background for your canvas, or when you're adding your, your bits on anyway. There we go. Just try and add a little bit and push it into the bristles at the bottom just to kind of make it a little bit more solid when it dries. Now really what I should try and do is maybe shoot a little bit of this using my mobile phone. Let me see if I can do that so you get to see both. Quickly he says, video, here we go. Okay, so I'm shooting this on my phone as well, so I'll, I'll overlay this footage. So I've gone right the way around the edge there. And I'll add a little bit on that corner there so you can see I've kind of glooped it on big style. Okay, so back to the overhead again. And then let's just try and kick some more of that down at the bottom. And I'm just going to bring it underneath because that will also help just to hold it onto the canvas. There we go. With any luck, that should do it. And then I'll just spin that round. And then just where it glooped out underneath the brush there, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit and do the same 
at this side. There we go. And that is going to be the paintbrush on the canvas. And there's still plenty of room to tuck things underneath when that's dry. Just screw the top back on the bottle. So I'm now going to leave that overnight and come back to it tomorrow morning. So with any luck, most of this will have gone trans transparent but because there's such a lot of it it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of it stays white that's better let me turn back over to the, the normal camera um the bits that aren't exposed directly to the air will take longer to dry obviously the one the, the surface area that is exposed directly to the air will dry quicker than the bits underneath that does that make sense so the stuff that's underneath the thicker stuff that's underneath the top layer will take longer to dry and will stay whiter for longer. But I'm only really interested in the top layer anyway. So like I said, I'm going to leave that um, for a good 12 hours. It's now about quarter to four uh, in the afternoon, on Friday afternoon. So I will restart this after I've taken Mr. Bentley out for his WALK in the morning. So I'll restart this again around about 10 a.m. Hopefully that will have dried sufficiently for me to then be able to start building up all the other components on the canvas in that configuration that I showed you earlier. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to go finish my cup of coffee, have a cuddle with Mr. Bentley, wherever he is, he's disappeared off, and I'll see you again in the morning. So, good morning. It's now... Um... 5 to 10 on Saturday the 30th and as you can see um, most of this now is dry but it's just the surface which is what I was saying yesterday I was taking far too long to try and explain um, so yeah all the surface is now dry but what I also did is I realized that if I wanted to add anything heavy on top then it would take ages to dry as well. So I've added the first few pieces overnight. Well, I'll say overnight. Before I went to bed last night, I added them on um, just so that they'd be ready for the morning. So to add the rest of it on, um, just so you, you, you get it, um, underneath here, you can actually feel that it is still wet. So it will take a while for it to dry. But like I said, the surface is dry enough for us to work on with no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on, um, but this time I'm going to carry on using my hot glue gun to add my um, other items onto the canvas because it's going to be a lot quicker and I won't have to worry about the, uh, the gel medium or the, the super thick slap, slap it on in this case. Um, to take that long, long time to actually dry and cure before I can add any paint onto it. So for the purposes of this demonstration video, we're going to use hot glue gun. But if you wanted to use, like I say, the super thick and take your time over it, then there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Okay, so just have to wait now until this is of sufficient heat. Because I've just turned it on. So it's not quite ready yet, so which means I've got time to go down and put the kettle on. Hey, hey. Okay, I think there's been a little drop of glue that's come out of the glue gun, which means that it's ready to go. I'll just put the next stick in. Uh, but also, as you can see, I did say yesterday that I was doing some more casting downstairs. I was doing some flowers. So I have done. It's all the same resin. Um, it's just all that horrible white colour so it shouldn't be that white colour it should be this kind of creamy colour um, it was a bad batch that they sent me so the only way to get around not being able to see the detail is just to add some alcohol inks so I have done I've added one drop of teak wood alcohol ink into that batch and a couple of drops of cranberry into that batch and you get these lovely kind of colours 
Um, and if you're wondering about that colour, that was pesto. And that was stream. I know, stream's blue, but it, because it was creamy coloured. Uh, anyway, so I've got those to add onto the canvas. Um, now originally I had two cogs down here and I'm going to put the flowers on instead. So I've just dropped my glue stick. Alright, so let's add one of these lovely big um, roses on the corner there. And do the same thing. I've lost my stick and it's just fallen out. It's not behaving itself today. There we go. That's more like it. And then we've got time just to add those kind of onto the corners of the canvas before it grabs. And then we'll add the wings in. do this before that's it I'm not too worried about the strings because I can come back in later with a brush and get rid of those so I just want to try and make sure I've got the wings kind of level that's it so they're not going to go anywhere. Oh, sorry, I haven't put those on yet. I just placed them down. <laughs> I know it looks like they were stuck on. So, actually, I think I'm going to put one of those larger screw heads on there. Just on the forehead. Haha. <laughs> and then at that one. into there. See half the fun of these canvases is actually placing down and finding somewhere to add all your items. All good fun. Right so let's add some smaller flowers in. Smaller flowers and the beauty of these are, because I've got the moulds, if I want more flowers doing later, I can do. Ish, no problem. Right, so let's start tucking in some items up here. So that's a nice leaf. And we've got a nice leaf here as well. Right, so what I'll do is I'll just go on to fast forward now as I'm starting to add some of these other items onto the canvas. And then I'll pop you on some. I keep dropping the stick on the floor, sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll put some music on and I'll go into fast forward as I start adding in um, some more of these detail pieces and I've deviated probably completely from the original plan that I took photos of yesterday but that's okay we can deal with that Right, I think, actually, I think I'm done. I don't think I'm going to add any more to that. I mean, I could perhaps, but they're going to be kind of overwhelmed, I think. So I'm not going to bother. So we've got a few spares for another project another day. 
ones that we haven't used but I think that will do. So I'm going to let it cool down for a bit and then I'll come out and I'll get the brush and we'll have a look at removing these strings that are all over the place and then I'll be back once I've done that. Okay so I've pretty much gone round everywhere removing as many strings as I possibly can that's not gonna go anywhere now everything's secured on. I did glue on one final flower just at the bottom there just not because I could really. Um, you know why not and you can squeeze one more on why not. So the next trick or the next step is to cover everything in white gesso which is what I'm going to do here. So it is a tub of indigo blue white gesso seeing as we've used mostly indigo blue products so far with the slap it on and the canvas we may as well continue. So literally this is just going to be a case of going round the entire of the canvas covering everything with possibly more than one coat of the white gesso because it may need it. So this is going to be a bit of a laborious and boring part of the project so depending on how long this video is going to be I will either when I come to edit I will either fast forward or jump to the end because you know I'm only painting the entire canvas with white paint really so you ain't missing out on anything if I do jump to the end Trust me, <laughs> it's not the most interesting of processes. But like I said, depending on how long the video is going to be in the final edit, I will either jump to the end or I will go through and I will play some music on fast speed. Okay, so that's first and possibly second coat, I think. Um, but there are still some areas within like through the eyes there that I couldn't get to so what I've done is I've mixed up a gesso and water spritzer so this is just a spritzer bottle with a little bit of gesso in and a little bit of water so hopefully there we go this will enable me then just to squeeze and drop some of that gesso into those areas that the brush can actually get into. So I'll just grab that other one and then we can just tuck under and it should flow into those areas that we couldn't get to before. So maybe just need a little bit more water to gesso ratio in there I think. It's not a very good spritz bottle these Tim Holtz ones. That's it, just make it a bit more watery. That way it'll be easier to come through the bottle and give it a quick shake. There we go and we can get into the holes then that we wouldn't necessarily have managed to get into previously. And then we just get the brush. And then the trick is, is to get in there quick as you can there we go 
um, with with the heat gun. Get it dried off. Oh, I'm going to spread up the desk there. So if you've got a few awkward areas, just mix a little bit with water, a little bit of gesso with water and let it flow into those difficult to get to areas. And then get your heat gun on it. Right, so the gesso is pretty much all dry now and it's all soaked in, so I'm ready to start adding in some colour. So the first colour that I want to add in is going to be um, what's going to sit in the background if you like. So I've got, and usually for me, I've got a real dark green. So I'm going to put a little bit of this paint, I'll try and wipe that off, there we go, and a smallish brush, I'm going to take some of this paint and I'm going to add it now, just around the canvas really quickly and then I'm going to blast it we got this on. There we go. And we can start loosening up, adding in some darkness into the canvas. When I say darkness, some darker colours into that kind of background. and get it in all those kind of nooks and crannies and I can just start blasting it with water normally you would maybe do a brown colour or whatever into the background but sometimes if you want in different effects and obviously to play with a different colour palette then it's great to use colours that you wouldn't normally kind of entertain. So we'll add quite a bit of this green colour and just let it flow and sit. And obviously the wetter the paint, the better the kind of runoff you'll get. And don't be afraid to tip to get it to manoeuvre. Plenty of the colour on and then just hit it. And then just let it go. And then, oh, let's grab some kitchen towel. I know it seems like an awful waste, but it isn't really. I 
and then I'm going to start and do the same thing on this side. Just get ready for what happens next. I just love the way that the colour starts to pool in just the right places. And then as soon as you hit it with the water, and then let it run. And then again, just in those darker areas, just introduce your colour. Don't be too frightened. I mean, look at the detail that started to appear in that. It's fabulous stuff. I keep hitting my other colour bottles. Okay, so I'm going to keep on adding a bit more colour and I'm going to keep on working it. I'm not quite ready to hit it with the heat gun just yet. There are, there are certain areas that I want a bit darker. But using green as a background colour is something I don't normally use Okay, let's hit it again. I think I'm happy with that. Okay. Get it dried. Oh, 
Okay, so we're almost there with the drying. It's still wet in places, but that's fine. So I've got um, a brown spritzer, which I made up a couple of weeks ago. I'm hoping it's still going to work. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce a little bit of darkness just into that background. And then again, just hit it with the water just to kind of give it a little bit of shadow. And again, just underneath and along the edge. Fingers are starting to hurt. There we go. Just let that run and sit. I mean, it's nice to have bright colours, but sometimes you know, bright colours are just exactly that, they're too bright and you don't necessarily want to go too bright. That's better. That's it. Really is going to kind of grunge. And dirty it up a little bit. Okay, so now let me just run that down. Yeah, I think I'm actually really happy with that. Maybe just a little bit more water up there, but I think. Um, okay. With a little bit of brown on those wings. Yep. Yeah. I'm liking the way it's pooling. It's a little bit dark on that cherub. Maybe a little bit more on the the handle piece. Sometimes when you look at it you just think, yeah, maybe just a bit, a tad there, a tad there, and then just hit it slightly with the water and then you've got the perfect effect. And don't forget, art is always in the eye of the beholder. What you like isn't necessarily what somebody else likes. But you do it for you. Okay, so that's the brown dry. So I'm really, really happy with that kind of washed out, dirty um, kind of effect that we've got on there. Almost like it's been outside for months or years and the colours kind of washed off and faded down. Love that, love it a lot. Okay so it's still wet in areas and it's now lunchtime, it's actually quarter past 12 so we've been at this quite a while <laughs> since I got up this morning since Mr Bender went out for his WALK so I'm going to knock off and grab some lunch and then that's going to give this a little bit more time to kind of dry um, and then after lunch, I'm going to come back and start adding in um, a little bit more colour, a little pop of colour, and then we can start adding a bit of bling too. Okay, so it's now a quarter past one in the afternoon on Saturday. Um, 
so it's had a good kind of hour and a bit I think to dry so now I want to just bring in a few spots of another colour so this is um, dried clay from DecoArt Americana so what I've done is the bottle that I had that white gesso spritz in earlier I've washed out and um, I've not gone completely mad um, <laughs> to wash it out <coughs> I've just rinsed it just under the tap and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of this clay colour just into the bottle and I'm just going to introduce a fair bit of water and just give that a shake see that's just going to break up the paint I've managed to get it all down the side how? how have I managed to get it all down the side and now all over my fingers <clears throat> I guess I'm just messy intrinsically I'm just a messy a messy person um, right so give it a shake up and then I'm just going to that's it just now add a little bit of warmth just kind of like into those flower areas and just a little bit across the top okay so now we've got that and I'm going to grab my spritz bottle again and then just loosen it all back up again And once again, like I said before on projects like this, it, it is just um, a question of being patient and it's 90% drying time with anything like this. So that's pretty much just trying to take out those little cherub's eyes there. And a little bit from that little flower radial down there just to add a little bit of warmth to it. Okay, so most of that kind of terracotta -y dried clay colour is dry now. So what I want to do is just introduce a real pop of colour. So this time I've got hold of my bright salmon and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with some of this pink colour. So I've added a little bit of um, the salmon into that spritz bottle. It's the same bottle, I've just rinsed it out again just in the tap, under the tap in the, the bathroom and I'm just putting about a third of the bottle so it's a real loose acrylic spritz and then just grab some kitchen roll and then I can just start working the paint through there we go and now I can just add a final kind of pinky line and it will kind of dry a bit of a different colour It's not a colour I would normally use so this is really stepping outside my comfort zone but it works really well with that dried clay um, so yeah I think the green and that colour works really really well the salmon is now dry and I'm hoping you can see it and it's not too washed out on the screen so I want to start adding some metallic paint now so I'm going to carry on with the indigo blue theme so this is brass monkey so this is the brass colour that I nagged them and nagged them and nagged them to make and they finally agreed <laughs> so it's only fair that I actually use it 
and I'm going to just draw, start dry brushing now. The, one, the reason I'm using brass rather than gold is because of the green and the, the kind of like brown tones um, in the project. So it's just going to um, pick up better because of those kind of greens and kind of reds. In some places I'm going to go quite heavy on the brass. So again, this is going to take a little bit of time because there's a lot to try and catch. So again, we will nip into fast forward. And I think that's just about it. See, it's surprising the different kind of effects you can get just by using those warm tones in the background and that kind of warm gold effect with the brass. I appreciate it is brass, it's not gold. Gold is a different colour. Um, but it's surprising, you know, the sort of effects you can get. See, back in the day when they did gilding on mouldings and that kind of stuff, they used um, a, a, a reddish paint before adding the gold. Um, and I forget what that um, red paint is called. I used to know what it was. Um, but I've just forgotten the never mind. But there you go. You see you can keep on going and keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. Add in more and more and more gold or brass effect. Um, but to be honest, <laughs> it, it it really doesn't need it. You know, you, you've got all your, your highlights kind of taken care of. You've got that beautiful kind of reddish ground in the background. Um, what more do you need? <laughs> I know this project has kind of taken me a couple of days, but sometimes, you know, you set the time aside, you need to do something um, occasionally just to scratch a creative itch and this definitely was a creative itch for me. I've always wanted to have a go at doing one of these kind of art paintbrushes. All right, I've added it onto a canvas but what the heck. Um, but I think for me I'm done. I mean, look at the shine. And I don't mind the fact that I've got the white background. I think the white background just adds to it. 
and the fact you can see the cogs through the skull's eyes so yeah I think I'm very very kind of let me just tilt that a little bit because it's catching the, the light better on that gold of the brass well the goldy colour of the brass so I'm very happy with the way that's turned out and I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this canvas um, like I said although it's probably going to end up being about an hour long I know some of you like the longer videos and I know some of you have got busy lives but you can always watch it in two halves or in 10 minute segments it's entirely up to you and um, you don't have to sit and watch an a video all in one go but there you go but I'm very pleased with the way that turned out so although it's not Halloween until tomorrow it is kind of like the final Halloween project for me for the year only because there's a skull on there but apart from that yeah I'm very happy so I hope you've enjoyed watching that if you have please remember to give the video a thumbs up as it really does help share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already because I will be doing more stuff like this then all you have to do is hit that subscribe button at the end of the video that's all for me for now I'll see you all again very very soon bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.